Government Freud used this with advertising. Once they were hip to this, in the 60s it really, say, actually they started experimenting in the 50s, but in the 60s, that's when it took off. That's when music died, honestly. See, here's the deal. They started experimenting with music. They took whatever worked and put it out there. They put on random bands to see what would and wouldn't catch on. Then they then they started isolating this formula, the the effective formula, and use it to sell stuff. They then started associating things with sex, and marketing these things to children to create future consumer slaves while maintaining the adults. They, this especially happened with rock and roll in the sixties and seventies, but then in in the late seventies and eighties, hip hop started. See, hip hop was originally just silly Jamaican party music but people found that it was a voice of expression amongst artists of all types in New York it became a voice of rebellion independent thought it became a voice of, uh, of revolution things things that inspire uh, I can't even think of everything but it, it just inspired the youth to do different things you know, and it really didn't tell you didn't have to be a great singer, you didn't have to be even a great lyricist. It was just an art form that allowed people to speak their mind. And what made it extremely powerful was more than the fact that it didn't take much talent, just insight and something to say, but the fact that it transcended religion, culture, race, nationality, hell, even class. And you'll see all types rapping about their lives and trying to get people active. This is all for naught. See, the mainstream knows that marginalizing, marginalization is the best way to deal with any type of rebellion. Either that or persuade them to sell out. And then throw fake-ass fake rebels out like Tupac or N.W.A. to pacify the masses with these fake visions of hope and this nonsensical simplistic view of the world uh, where um, you're taking care of your mama or you're talking about some slag having a bastard because she was too damn irresponsible to make him put on a condom knowing damn well she just wanted to get pregnant so she could get on welfare to qualify for some food stamps so she could get some boots from Ross but here's the deal in many cases you don't even you don't even have to make them sell out to make it seem like they did. Take for example Ice-T. Ice-T was one of the original gangster rappers. His songs lured you in talking about the grit and grime of the streets. The gangster life. Then halfway through the song he started dropping reality on your head. You'll end up in prison or dead. Well maybe you'll make it out. But with none of your friends left what have you prolific rhymes for that time that talked about how society really was and the aspects that people like to ignore because they get really comfortable really uncomfortable they hit way too close to home no one wants to hear about molestation no one wants to hear about the little girl whose daddy cuddled and touched too much and started fondling her so she became a freak they don't want to hear that nope so they cut that out they cut that out and when they saw the formula's attractiveness they created the NWA you see it just glorified the glamorous aspects of the LA gangster life the picnics and whatnot the parties you know kill the police and all this garbage and, and what happened was people all over the country started seeing this combined with the gangster crap that they were throwing on TV non-stop around 88, 89, all the way up to 94 people all over the country started making their own stupid groups as well as, as gangs FBI <coughs> front groups that went around creating sets and running neighborhoods while filling up prisons that became overcrowded which is a problem we're dealing with today then on the other hand, later in time, you had Biggie who glamorized the life that very few people achieve. The money, the power, the ability to have someone killed with a phone call, and random trips to Milan. 
they are within reach of everyone. But people want that. So they live vicariously through these images created by guys like Biggie and Jay-Z with no plans to achieve them. With no, with no reasoning, no, they have no idea how to get to that level. And what makes it worse is the fact that these rappers pretended like they got these riches from slanging dope and robbing people. They, they don't give you an idea of the networking, the hard work that it takes, what kind of work that it takes to do this. They don't tell you about the sacrifices. In some video or news article that no one's going to read, they'll talk about it. But for the most part, people listen to the music, they get wrapped up in it, then they get into this character. That's what Tupac is. He's a character. Jay-Z was a character. These are characters and people are absorbing illusions. They're absorbing illusions. You see, the average idiot tries to get to that level without the skills needed to achieve such success and ends up chasing a in, he ends up chasing pedestrian aspirations. And as they get older and they have some slag and a bunch of bastards running around that they have to feed. Or they end up in jail because they actually tried to sell crack to come up to that level or heroin or meth or whatever dumb shit or, or, or rob somebody. This, these things aren't going to happen. Italian job level people are not out there like this. Most of those types are highly educated people with good jobs who are robbing because they have access to that world. A world you'll never know about because you live in mediocrity. Which is why things like Tupac seem so real to you. Oh, he's so real because you live a shitty life. And when you live a shitty life, idiots and their loser-ass mentalities seem to be something you can connect to. But people who have a higher mind and grew up in a higher level of society see that as pathetic and see that if they were born in that life, they'd want to get the hell away from it because it's lame. And those people are dumb, and their dreams are pathetic. And that's that brings me to my next point: the fact that you know, the thing is, I mean, you're right. You know, these complacent sheep love all of this. They like the cycle of success, then regression, poverty, the resurgence of success, or the economy coming together. When in reality, it's just a long cycle of mediocrity. It goes in cycles so that you'll miss your shitty job, your ugly husband, your stupid kids, your dashed dreams and hopes. You know, that are replaced by fantasies of going back to just getting by. Which will seem great compared to being in abject poverty. Like I said, you're the frog the lobster and the cream is being reduced in the other pan with white wine and shallots eventually you'll be ground up for bisque but by then it'll already be too late cause you'll be dead from the boiling water so have fun with your shitty lives and your stupid dreams not being able to understand the reality that's in front of you ignoring it because ultimately you jack of dandies fucked yourselves a long time ago your ancestors fucked you you've been essentially screwed since Hitler fell the world doesn't want to deal with any more guys like him not, it's not the aspect of killing Jews or white nationalists or any of that bullshit. It's not about that. It's the fact that he was going to use his military might to grasp all the power and create a world in his image. They don't want any more emperors. Just pawns and other people, other members of the consortium. That's it. No competitors. China knows this, that's why it armed itself to the teeth and then played the game so that even though they're at the round table with a bunch of white dudes and a couple of nig nogs, they know that they're protected. But the rest, the average citizen, the average common man, he's, 
is a pawn. And that's pretty much how it is. Bitch. <laughs>